In the Masterpiece series, The Legend of Zelda, you play as... Link. But there usually is a character named Zelda, so how much does Zelda do in each Zelda game? Well... Spoilers for every single Zelda game ever made. The Legend of Zelda, the first one. A simple game with a simple plot. In the land of Hyrule, Zelda splits the Triforce of Wisdom into eight parts to hide it from Ganon. She is then kidnapped by Ganon. This all happens in the instruction manual. In the actual game, you save her at the end, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link She's asleep for the whole game, but it's not that Zelda, it's the original Zelda. But not that original Zelda, a different original Zelda. At the end of the game, you wake her up. That's it. Look, these are old games from over 30 years ago, inspired by classic fairy tales and generic fantasy. Each file size is probably smaller than Link's eyebrow twitching animation in modern games. But in the 16-bit era, you got games like Final Fantasy VI, Secret of Mana, Chrono Trigger, you can tell more substantial stories. So what happens in the next one? The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Zelda gets kidnapped two times. Okay, you save her at the start, and then she hangs out at the church where she'll be safe. She then gets kidnapped again from the church where she'll be safe. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. She ain't even in this one. This game entirely takes place inside of Link's fever dream. All the characters are from his subconscious and there's no Zelda. Should give you an idea of how much she matters to him. Legend of Zelda. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time This is the first game where Zelda actually gets to do stuff during the game. She starts as child Zelda running some tactical espionage action against Ganondorf, this clearly evil looking dude. She's all like, I'm not getting kidnapped, I'm just gonna A, run away, and B, toss Link the time flute. This inadvertently leads to Hyrule being conquered because when he entered the sacred realm, Link forgot to close the door behind him. But how is Zelda supposed to know that? Seven years later, Zelda is in hiding as Sheik. Sheik gets to go out and do more stuff, like speaking riddles, teach Link some warp songs, get bodied by Bongo Bongo. Sheik is making moves. The contrast between Zelda and Sheik was even present in Smash Brothers Melee, where Sheik is a top tier speedy ninja and Zelda is a low tier. What moves should we give her? What does she do? Uh, magic? Uh, give her the magic moves that Link had. Oh, and she's a girl, so put her in heels and make her kick. Zelda kick! Zelda kick! Zelda kick! When she transforms into Zelda near the end of the game, she's immediately kidnapped, like frame-perfect crystallization by Ganondorf. And you gotta save her. After a round of tennis, you escort her out of the tower as she walks very slowly. Hurry it up! Transform back into Sheik, maybe? During the final final battle, Link didn't use Flex Seal and loses the Master Sword, and it lands right next to Zelda. Hey Zelda, maybe throw it back? I'm fighting for my life over here? This was the start of the Zelda scrolling Twitter while Link is getting stabbed by the final boss trend that we'll see a few more times. She does help with the finishing move against Ganon, then tells Link, no Zelda see for you. Bye bye random boy. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. She ain't even in this one, except for a flashback where Link learns the time song again. The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. She ain't even in these ones! Unless you link the games together, then she gets kidnapped by the secret final boss Twin Rova and Link saves her. Great! Four swords! This ain't a real game. She's captured by Vadi who planned on marrying her. Link, 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 and Link rescue her at the end. Good! Quick sidebar though. In a video game, how much agency should an NPC have? You don't necessarily want someone else other than the player to show up and save the day. The player is supposed to do that. But like in Ocarina and some of the other characters in Majora's Mask, if you want the game world to feel more lived in, then maybe some of the characters should, you know, have stuff to do in the story, other than essentially serve as an object that needs to be reclaimed. Especially when that character's name is, oh I don't know, in the title? Which brings us to The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. In this one, she's Tetra and she's making moves. I mean, you do save her at the start of the game, but afterwards she's an active participant in the story. She leads a group of pirates who are on their own pirate adventures, actively helps Link out during his adventures, investigates Jobin's disappearance and makes a plan to get bombs. She even throws hands with Ganondorf at one point. Partway through, she learns she's actually Princess Zelda, and then she is told to wait in the castle where she'll be safe, while Link goes out on more adventures. 
She then gets kidnapped from the castle where she was told she would be safe. This is neither here nor there, but her skin color changes when she becomes Zelda? As a kid playing this, I was like, wait, what? And as an adult playing this, I was like, wait, wait what? She helps out during the final boss by shooting light arrows, starting out the other trend of final boss ranged support turret, and comes up with the plan for the finishing move. I'll shoot you, and then you shoot him, and then you stab him in the face. All right, Zelda got to do more stuff for that game. How about the next one? The Legend of Zelda, the Minish Cap. She gets turned to stone at the start, stays that way until the end. Excellent. The Legend of Zelda, Four Swords Adventures. She's kidnapped at the start with six other women. You save her near the end and have to escort her out of the tower winds, but she does help during the final boss with light magic, range support turret. The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess. Zelda is contractually obligated to be here and is straight up season 8 Cersei Lannistering it. In this one, she was the queen of Hyrule, I think, and peacefully surrenders to the pee pee poo poo man. So Hyrule gets covered in twilight. Oh no! But like, what difference does it make? People turn into ghosts, but they're not even aware that they're ghosts. They're going about their daily life still. Am I supposed to feel motivated to change this? It's a fun game, but this story never made sense to me. Anyways, halfway through the game, Zelda sacrifices herself to revive Minna because she was like, why am I even in this game? At the very end of the game, somehow Zelda returned. So during the first phase of the final boss, you fight zombie Zelda. Then in the third phase of the final boss, she teams up with you and shoots light arrows on horseback. Once again, ranged support turret. If you were already a Legend of Zelda fan, these parts of the game are probably like, whoa, we're fighting Zelda. Whoa, we're teaming up with Zelda. She's on my horse. Somehow. But if this was your first Legend of Zelda game, she's just some woman. Wouldn't it make more sense to, I don't know, team up with the Twilight Princess? who's been with you the whole game in more than just half of one phase and during a cutscene where she dies off screen? And once again, Zelda doesn't help you during the final final boss phase, even though she's right there. Girl, you ever heard of arc shots? The Legend of Zelda, Phantom Hourglass. She's Tetra again, does this mean she's gonna get to go on more pirate adventures? She gets kidnapped by a boat, then turned to stone, then kidnapped again. The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks, choo choo. Zelda's contract ran out, so they kill her off in this one. She just straight up dies. Nah, I'm just kidding, but she is a ghost and they kidnap her body? Uh... In many Zelda games, Link usually has a traveling companion or someone frequently helping him out in some way, like a fairy or a fairy or an imp or a sea captain, or a boat, or a robot, or a tablet, or a hat, or Sahasrala. In Spirit Tracks, Zelda gets to be Link's assistant. Oh, okay. She helps you out during the game, being able to possess certain enemies for puzzle solving. So at least she's sort of doing stuff, helping out on the journey with Link. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. She's the reincarnation of a goddess in this one, but that's not important till way later. At the start, she pushes Link off a cliff and he dies. <laughs> He ain't gonna be in rush hour three. Then she gets sucked down a tornado at the start of the game. Half of this game's story is just, Oh man, Zelda was just here, you just missed her. But she does go on her own journey that you see during the credits, where she gets captured, Impa saves her a couple times, she travels back in time and seals herself into a crystal. Then she gets kidnapped at the end by the new Pee Pee Poo Poo Man 2, and you have to save her. Look y'all, I played the original Wii Skyward Sword over 10 years ago, and I cannot recall a single plot detail. I only remember the repetitive design and bad controls. The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. She gets turned into a painting. Even Hilda, the evil Zelda they made up just for this game, does more than actual Zelda. The Legend of Zelda, Triforce Heroes. That's not a real game. Zelda almost always has one of the Triforce, but she's not even in this game, except for one flashback. They would sooner have Link dress up as Zelda than let you just play as Zelda. The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. This is science Zelda. She goes out exploring, helping out with garden research, tries to unlock her seal power, has Link sent to the Shrine of Resurrection, places the Master Sword in the forest, and goes to Hyrule Castle on her own during the apocalypse to 1v1 Demon Ganon. Dang, she's like a whole character in this one. However, all of this happens before the game in optional flashbacks. You don't see her until the very end of the game, but you do hear her voice a few times, mostly telling you to pick up the magic iPad. She's been holding back Ganon for a 
100 years and you have to power up and save her. But she can last at least a little bit longer, so you can take your time, dick around, go snowboarding or whatever. She doesn't even become ranged support turret during the final boss in this one. She hands Link her bow and says, you fucking do it. She finally appears in person, a few seconds before the credits start. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. At time of writing, this game ain't out yet, and they ain't showing anything. Zelda YouTubers are starving. If I have to hear about the Zonai one more goddamn time. In early trailers, people were like, she has shorter hair, maybe this was done to closer match Link's model to help make her playable. But all she's done in trailers is fall down a ravine. That's it. Hopefully she has some stuff to do, but based on uh, patterns, I'm willing to bet you spend some or all of the game trying to save her. I don't know y'all, I've been playing video games my whole life and the more I play, the more I'm starting to think that some of these video games might have weird attitudes towards women. No, 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 that can't be right. Here, let me check my book of every video game ever made and... Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> the funny thing is that Zelda does more in the spin-off games made by other companies than in her actual series. In Hyrule Warriors, you can play as Zelda. Look at her go, doing stuff on the battlefield. And she transformed into Sheik too. I didn't actually play this one. I don't I don't know what happens in it. In Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, which is an alternate timeline prequel to Breath of the Wild, it's the return of science Zelda. But here, she's the real main character of the whole game. You can play as her, she gets an entire actual character arc, she builds an army, the game isn't centered around her getting kidnapped, this is the most Zelda, Zelda game without even being called a Zelda game. Even in those weird Philips CDI games she actually does stuff. In two of the three games you actually play as her. It's weird how this meme-tastic booty game gives Zelda more agency than her actual series. These aren't good examples though, those games are pretty doo-doo. While the main series games have, in general, increased Zelda's presence and influence in the story, what are ways to improve this in the future? give her stuff to do during the game other than sit around and be rescued. Some of these games have done that, and those are some of the coolest parts of the game. Others have not. Or maybe after 20 some odd games, make Zelda playable. Her name is in the title. So what could a Zelda's game look like? Well, the obvious option would be role reversal. Make a game like the older ones, but you play as Zelda and rescue Link. You know, they tried something like that before with Super Princess Peach, the very real and very official Nintendo game which is an 8 hour long vibrator joke. I'm not making that up, that's really what the game is. While that type of game would get a ton of free press from people who are able to monetize their shitty takes, I think doing a one to one character swap doesn't quite harness the potential of who Zelda is. Zelda ain't just Lady Link, she's a leader, she's a magician, she's a ninja, she's a scientist, she's an archer when she feels like it. So I, I put together a mood board of what a potential Zelda's game could look like. Also, I don't know what a mood board is. Link goes on an adventure outside of Hyrule, and Zelda has to use her royal position to protect Hyrule. She does princess and queenly activities during the day, issue royal decrees, allocate resources and soldiers, research new technologies to help her people, negotiate peace between the Gorons and the Zora, and after hours, she takes matters into her own hands, using her archery skills and magic Triforce powers to fight evil dudes, maybe even transform into Sheik and do some stealth missions. Summer. 2027. The Legend of Zelda. Zelda is tired. I don't know. I don't make the games. Anyways, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below with what your favorite version of Zelda is. And remember, today's comment code word is FORK. Comment FORK if you made it all the way through the video. It was way longer than I thought it would be. And uh, that's it. The video's over.